Building permanent structures in order to provide shelter and create a safe environment away from the elements. This took the form of cave dwellings and mud huts until modern building practices became commonplace. But rarely architects will build homes in precarious places, challenging the very purpose of the homes themselves. From Japanese tea houses to German castles, many houses are perched at precarious heights. Of course, it's hard to quantify, but today we're looking at the 10 most dangerous homes, based on popular opinion. Liechtenstein Castle is not famous outside of Germany, but in Baden-Württemberg, it's known as the Fairy Tale Castle. The castle is actually a hunting lodge built on the ruins of a former castle, and the current structure was completed in 1842. It was built in a pseudo-medieval style, which was very en vogue in the 19th century. The most striking feature of the property is that the castle's outer wall is built right on the edge of a cliff. The vertiginous view is enough to unsettle even the boldest of tourists. Architects claim that the castle is structurally sound, but any shift in the foundation could cause the building to collapse. During World War II, an American tank passing through the valley below fired a shell, which directly hit the main tower. Fortunately, the shell failed to explode, saving the impressive building from destruction. However, a hole in the plaster where the shell struck remains to this day. Fans of Super Street Fighter 2 may also recognize the castle, which provided inspiration for Cammy's stage. For the time being, this castle is relatively unknown in the tourist circuit, meaning it could be a great time to visit before word gets out. The Japanese certainly have a penchant for out-of-this-world treetop architecture, and this incredible Takasugian tea house is no exception. Designed by architect Teronobu Fujimori, the tree-bound tea house stands precariously perched upon the trunks of two timbers erected on a plot of family land in Chino Nagano Prefecture. In Japan, tea masters have traditionally maintained total control over their construction of their tea houses. Their main concern for these enclosures was simplicity, and in order to keep things simple, tea masters preferred not to involve architects or craftsmen to help them with the construction. Building upon this tradition, Fujimori's tea house is quite small and compact, and can accommodate four and a half tatami mats. The architect describes the small building as though it were an extension of one's body, like a piece of clothing. However, Fujimori's main concern is not necessarily the art of tea making, but pushing the limits and constraints of a traditional tea house. Two chestnut trees were felled on a nearby mountain and brought to the site, where they were used as the supports for the structure. Takasugi-an literally means a tea house built too high. Guests must climb a freestanding ladder, which leans against one of the trees, in order to reach the little house. Midway up the ladder, guests must remove their shoes and leave them on the platform. Though many are skeptical about the safety of this precarious perch, authorities have allowed it to continue its centuries-old tradition of serving tea. The infamous Sutyagin residence is a 13-story structure built by a notorious mobster and his family over the course of 12 years. Dominating the skyline of Arkhangelsk, a city in Russia's far northwest, it's believed to be the world's tallest wooden house, soaring to reach 144 feet, about half the size of the Tower of Big Ben. Sutyagin began building in 1992, and in the original plans it was only going to reach two stories high, like a normal house. Yet he was inspired by the vernacular architecture and wooden houses of Japan and Norway to keep going. First I added three floors, but then the house looked ungainly, like a mushroom, he told the Daily Telegraph in a 2007 interview. So I added another, and it still didn't look right, so I kept going. What you see today is a happy accident. Unlike many of the other homes on our countdown, the Sudyakin house was not built with any regard for safety regulations. It's a visible fire hazard and risks collapsing at any moment. What remained as of late 2009 was a small two-story wooden house, roughly the size of what Sudyakin had originally planned to build before dreams of a wooden tower took hold. These structures were finally destroyed in a fire in 2012. High above the Meteora landscape in the central region of Greece, 60 monks and nuns live in fabled monasteries perched on the edge of sandstone peaks. In centuries past, their place of worship brought them solitude and protection from unwanted trespassers. Today, the Orthodox monasteries are one of the most popular destinations in all of Greece. Only a few hours from Athens at the fringe of the Plain of Thessaly, the town of Kalambaka plays host to Meteora's spectacular mountaintop attractions. Windswept monoliths rise abruptly from the earth, with vertical cliffs forming a dramatic backdrop against the flat fields around them. The picture-perfect vistas have been the inspiration for countless film and TV backdrops, including the Ivory Kingdom and HBO series Game of Thrones. The word Meteora means literally hovering in the air, and you can immediately understand how these structures earn the title. During the 14th century, the great monk Athanasios Konovidis brought a group 
group of devote followers from Mount Athos to Meteora in search of a group of ascetic hermits that had developed a religious stronghold in the region. He was mesmerized by the hermits' free climbing skills that had allowed them to live in the caves and fissures high above the ground, and saw an opportunity to create a convent where his flock could meditate and worship in peace. Employing the hermits as climbing mentors, the new visitors conquered the surrounding mountains and set about creating their own holy haven. It was then, from 1356 to 1372, that the great Meteoran Monastery was born. This series of suspended monasteries usually elicits a gasp from visitors. Perched at death-defying heights, the structures were first built in 491 AD and have survived for many centuries since then. Clinging to a crag of Hengshan Mountain, in apparent defiance of gravity, the temple consists of 40 rooms linked by a dizzying maze of passageways. Interestingly, the temple is dedicated to not just one religion, but three, with Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism all practiced within the temple, and represented in 78 statues and carvings throughout the temple. How could a building like this withstand the winds and storms of so many years? Hanging Monastery is an architectural wonder. A unique mechanical theory was applied to building the framework. Cross beams were half inserted into the rock at the foundation while the rock in back became its support. Why build a monastery like this? Location is the first reason. Building a monastery on the cliff could shield it from floods. In addition, the mountain peak protects it from rain and snow, and the mountain around it also diminishes damage from longtime sunshine. The second reason is that the builders followed a principle in Taoism. No noises, including those from rooster crowing and dog baying, so from the upper ground, all noises drop away. San Francisco residents mostly recognize the Cliff House as a premier spot for fine dining and amazing views. A restaurant has perched on this cliff overlooking the Pacific Ocean since 1863. Generations of San Franciscans and countless visitors have dined at the Cliff House and enjoyed the gorgeous ocean vistas. There have been a whole series of Cliff Houses over the years, the style changing with the times. It burned down twice and was closed during Prohibition, but the Cliff House is still here and serving new patrons every day. The Cliff House sits at Point Lobos, right at the entrance to San Francisco Bay. This was a prime spot for shipwrecks before radar. Strong currents, rocks, and dense fog made for a lethal combination, especially at night. The SS Ohioan, a cargo ship, ended up on the rocks near the Cliff House on a dark night in 1936. The massive property includes a ballroom, several restaurants, museums, and elaborate gardens. But with its precarious placement right on the rocky jetty, the building sustains almost frequent damage and must be constantly maintenanced. Because of its many accidents over the years, many people even believe that the property is cursed. The Victorian Cliff House survived the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, but burned down a year later. It's been destroyed twice since then and rebuilt. Castelfuit de la Roca looks like a town that was once a normal shape and by some incredible force stretched out over a kilometer-long basalt formation. Houses are pushed precariously close to the edge of a 160-foot drop-off and wind along the cliff looking over the countryside and rivers that flank the town below. Inhabited for over a thousand years, the town's narrow streets still carry the characteristics of its medieval origin, and the city center features ramparts that fortified the town during the Civil War. Many houses and streets in the city center are also built of the dark volcanic rock that serves as a pedestal for the town. The main street of Castelfoyit winds through the entire town narrowly pressed between houses on both sides, straining to remain on the cliff face. Formed by two overlapping lava flows, the area is home to abundant geological activity. The houses are alarming both for their precarious placement and their sheer age. Many doubt that the town would survive even a minor earthquake. Nonetheless, they are still inhabited and serve as a major tourist attraction near Valencia, Spain. From its peak on the layered volcanic formation, the town offers stunning views. To add to the drama of the landscape, the cliffs are illuminated from sunset until midnight for six months out of the year. Just off Highway 401 in Ontario, Canada, a rugged wilderness area carved by receding glaciers more than 12,000 years ago marks the international border between the United States and Canada. Exactly 1,846 of them poke above the surface of the St. Lawrence River, making an incredibly unique landscape for travelers wandering off Canada's well-trod tourist path. The Thousand Islands region, which spreads across 50 miles and covers territory in both the U.S. as well as Canada, is incredibly remote. Equipped with a simple paddle boat, travelers can venture down smaller channels and shorelines that are normally inaccessible. To count as one of the Thousand Islands, emergent land within the river channel must have at least one square foot of land above water level year-round and support at least two living trees. 
In the late 19th century, the Thousand Islands drew upper crust travelers from New York, Chicago, and Cleveland, who all viewed the region as their own exclusive summer retreat, hence the grand hotels and luxury steamboat tours that once crowded the shores of the St. Lawrence. Today, visitors can still admire the opulent Bold Castle, a 120-room, five-building compound commissioned by millionaire and Waldorf Astoria proprietor George Bolt. The palatial home occupies a heart-shaped island on the New York side, has a private bowling alley, and can be rented out for weddings and private events. The renovation costs alone were a whopping $15 million. The house is undeniably beautiful, but it is extremely difficult to access and is prone to power outages and food shortages. The Chemosphere is a modernist house in Los Angeles, California designed by John Lautner in 1960. The building, which the Encyclopedia Britannica once called the most modern home built in the world, is admired both for the ingenuity of its solution to the problem of the site and for its unique octagonal design. When John Lautner was given the site in 1960, there were two common methods for building houses on the difficult sloped land. The ground could be cut to create a level platform or the house could be supported on an open steel framework. The client, however, had a small budget of only $30,000, so Lautner instead took advantage of the client's extensive imagination and rejected both structural methods for one that would cost about half of the conventional solution, with retaining walls and land drains. Lautner perched the entire one-story octagon on a single 30-foot concrete column, leaving the natural surroundings untouched. Though it appears unsafe, Lautner was a professional, and even with a small budget, he was able to reinforce the column to meet safety standards. But the view is still pretty daunting, especially as the building ages. The classic UFO house is now worth $3.5 million. Harry Weiss was a prominent Chicago architect during the latter half of the 20th century. While he never reached the acclaim of contemporaries like I.M. Pei and Philip Johnson, he and his firm still completed hundreds of buildings in less than 50 years. The commission that first put Weiss on the map in 1958 was the U.S. Embassy in Accra, Ghana, a handsome rectangle of offices with projecting bays of Laverde mahogany. Many classic buildings followed. Historians credit him with reshaping the look and style of many Chicago suburbs, including his hometown of Evanston. However, his most controversial building is the Shadow Cliff Mansion on Lake Michigan. The house was built as a business executive's vacation office. Viewed from the front, the building appears exceedingly normal, but when visitors enter the back room, they realize they were suspended thousands of feet off the ground in a glass box. A horizontal porthole cut into the floor looks straight down. Not for the faint of heart, this glass viewing area offers a stunning panorama of the surrounding Great Lakes region. The home is valued at well over $2 million due to its singular view and its historical status.